stand-up comedy is in your future. I saw like seven people scrambling with butter towards your table now. Um, so how do you describe the leadership style of Tegna president and CEO David Lugie? Well, full disclosure before I continue, my husband, Neil Shapiro, serves on the board with David of Tegna. And so this will be very rosy. <laughs> um, you've all heard of the 12 steps of recovery, right? I think there's sort of five steps of leadership for David Lugie. Number one, he's purpose-driven. So Tegna strives to serve the greater good of its communities through good, solid journalism giving voice to the voiceless, speaking truth to power, and shedding light into all of the darkest corners of the world. Number two, he's innovative, truly. According to Dave, innovation is not one formula, but a series of experiments. It's orchestrated chaos, while incubating and first trying things in local communities so that it's not putting the entire company at risk. Number three, he inspires. The company's next generation of stars go through an annual process where they come up with ideas and vote on the best one to test. Those that test well get funded for pilots. Makes all sorts of sense. Step four, he doesn't miss the obvious. With three marketing dollars for every one ad dollar in our local markets, his account teams don't see themselves as selling TV ads. Instead, they offer solutions. Each month, Tegna reaches 50 million adults on air and approximately 30 million across its digital platforms, and it truly is a company innovating in that digital space. And finally, number five, he's involved. Dave's a well-respected leader throughout our entire industry. Many of you in this room know him well. He serves as chair of the NBC Affiliates Board. He is the immediate past joint chair of the NAB and a past chair of TVB. He also sits on the board of BMI and the Broadcasters Foundation of America and every other sequence of letters you can think of. Please welcome our next towering giant, David Lugie. Thank you, Juju. You didn't have to stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm truly humbled, like the other honorees here tonight. Uh, unlike Jack, I didn't tell any of our three boys about this to avoid the simultaneous three-boy eye roll. Um, and I'm 5'7 and a quarter, so I really do question whether I, I belong up here. But it is, uh, you know, I look down and see Dennis Swanson. Uh, I did. He just lived right there. But, um, it, it, is, it is an honor to be up here. So um, I did, <laughs> true story, when we Ubered over here, mistakenly I entered in the Gotham Comedy Club, which is where we were taken to. <laughs> and uh, I, I near, now realize I had John David's car. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I want to thank the Library um, of American Broadcasting Foundation and the ROTS Foundation for this great honor. Also want to thank the members of the Tegna management team and members of our board for being here. And most importantly, I want to thank my wife, Danny, for all of her love and support on our multi-city, multi-year journey in this wonderful industry. Also want to acknowledge that right now, our Tegna Executive Vice President, Lynn Beal, is winning a Gracie Award right across town. It's a, it's a dental moment, which is a really cool thing. And it's her daughter's 25th birthday today. So what a great way for a, a daughter and mom to spend their day. The word broadcasting originated from our roots, from our form of distribution. Our transmitters literally reach the broadest group. We reach virtually everybody in a local community. And our local content and programming was served to give people a common understanding of issues and a way to know and care about others in their community. As technology evolved from broadcasting to cable and most especially the internet and now high-speed internet, we've seen marvelous advances in services and platforms that have improved all our lives. But when it comes to news and information, to a common understanding of facts, an understanding and tolerance of our neighbors on the other side of town we may not otherwise know nor look like us, well, I don't think I have to sell anybody here that digital fragmentation 
hasn't proven to be so marvelous. Our form of distribution is still important, but not nearly so unique anymore. And we embrace distribution at Tegna on all platforms, as do my broadcast peers. But our mission of informing local communities and bringing them together appears more unique than ever and perhaps the most important it's ever been. At Tegna, we serve communities large and small across this country to large growing cities where the jobs have gone and rural communities that wonder where the next job will come from. Two years ago, right about now, it was acknowledged that both political parties as well as many national journalists had lost touch with average Americans living between the coasts, who they were, what they cared about, and what concerned them. Local broadcasters never did. For instance, we, the whole TV broadcast industry, was deeply involved in covering the opioid crisis years earlier. We and other companies like ours have trained local journalists serving those communities every day. Through investigations and storytelling, we shine a spotlight on those that are doing good, those that are doing wrong, and proactively bringing communities together by showcasing the majority of Americans who, with some help, want to think well of their neighbors rather than fear them. In fact, we don't exploit fears and resentments. We try to neutralize them with facts and context. Remember those quaint concepts? If you ask them, our talented and purposeful employees at Tegda can play back to you our stated purpose, as Juju mentioned, serving the greater good of our communities. And many other local broadcast companies in this room share those same values. I can only imagine the great work that Jack's LA station is doing today for the people around Thousand Oaks and in Southern California. And to shoot down a recent myth about local broadcasters, our employees make their own local editorial decisions about what issues and causes are important in their own communities. Like how the hell would we at corporate know better than them? God knows what's important to folks in Portland, Oregon may not look a lot like the issues in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we protect that local decision making with a passion. In closing, what we do matters. And it's a privilege to work in an industry and for a company and a board of directors that takes that responsibility and privilege so seriously. Thank you again to the Library of American Broadcasting Foundation and the IRTS Foundation, especially for all the work you do to support our industry and future media leaders. Thank you.